are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I'm so excited to talk to you. Oh, it is my pleasure. I'm excited to talk to you. I just got up. So Amazing. <laughs> the best I'm going to be today. <laughs> so you get to... You get to get all the good parts of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I feel like I know about your like waking rituals and whether or not you're going up and downstairs and your belongings and all this stuff. So I feel like I'm in your morning with you. <laughs> yes, you are experiencing it. I forgot they would have like put all my stuff in a bag to take it up last night. So it's still all downstairs. So the ritual is a little off. I do the same thing, by the way. I have my little tote bag and I have like four books in it at a time. And I'm like, I'm just going to take this with me wherever I go because you never know. So no, I need it, you know, it's my true. wallet, some masks, some books, yes. gum, yes. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. a lip gloss. What else yes. do you have? <laughs> uh, oh, I have to have like six lip balms mm -hmm. at all times like I don't care about like hand lotion you know how some people are like I yeah. gotta moisturize my hands I am I can't do that because then you just get grease all over like all your books and your other shit but lip balms I have to have like seven of them on me at all times that's smart so, I got like I got a case of lip glosses that are basically eight shades of the exact same color as a gift. <laughs> so there's like the tiniest gradations of pink and I'm like, whatever, they all look the same. I can't tell them apart. So mm -hmm. I have them like in every little like pencil holder or <laughs> and then I have like a bunch just scattered in the bag. So you never know. <laughs> but I, you know, like people like act like we're nuts for being like this, but honestly, we're just prepared. I think we're I'm efficient. For, yeah. I'm prepared for very specific instances of boredom and lip dryness. Totally. You never know when either <laughs> of those things will hit, perhaps simultaneously. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's good. So I'm glad I caught you in the morning and now we can, uh, <laughs> we can go from there. Um, so your latest book, Wow No Thank You, I laughed out loud. I so needed a good laugh as I think everybody in the world needs right now. And this yeah. is like, it was the funniest thing I've read in so long. So thank you for that. Oh my God. Thank you for saying that. It's, um, it's a weird, I mean, you know, we, we live in hell. It's a weird time to be putting out a book, but I was like, you know, at least people will laugh at it. But it's also like, I didn't get to tour. So I didn't get like response from a lot of people. I've just done these things where like someone on a zoom is like, it made me laugh. And that has <laughs> been so like helpful <laughs> to me. Because like, you, when you don't get feedback, it's like, Oh, God, yeah. Is this it's like, it's like being a comedian on stage with like a totally silent audience and you're like, um, was that funny? I thought it was funny. Did anybody else think it was funny? Yes. So yeah. anytime someone's like, listen, I was on the toilet laughing so hard I prolapsed my rectum. I'm like, well, that, thank you for telling me because I need to hear that. <laughs> I can't say that, but I will say <laughs> that I laughed on the couch and in bed and walking around as I do while I read and all the rest. So um, <laughs> if I find any other prolapse victims, I will send them your way and tell Please. them to DM or something. <laughs> Please do. Oh my gosh. But the best part about your humor is you're just mostly not all the time, but so many things you're talking about are things just we all do every day and have to deal with, whether it's like confronting these people on Instagram who have these perfect lives and are drinking perfect drinks and have these perfect skincare routines. But I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to shave my legs for the last like two weeks. And then like, you know, the, the not wanting to get out of bed to do anything at night when like suddenly I am like, you know, comatose by 10 o'clock, all these funny, just like life things that you shine the light on are just so awesome <laughs> thank you I feel like so people like will always ask like how can you be so open with your terrible inner monologue because my inner monologue is always like everything I'm doing wrong and getting wrong and saying wrong and looking wrong and I'm like I I have to say it because I have to believe that there's someone else who feels the exact same way because I like when I, you know, when people are like, you know, I'm really good at stuff. I'm just like, man, 
I'm not. So I got to speak to <laughs> people who are bad at stuff and get stuff wrong because like that feeling of seeing each other is like, that's how we all are going to survive. It's just knowing that there's someone else who like vomited in the middle of dinner and couldn't get up in time. Like knowing that there's at least one other person who's like making these mistakes, like makes you feel better. Yes. <laughs> Especially, you know, anyone with Crohn's disease should just like put this by their bed and, you know, they, the doctors should hand this out with diagnoses. <laughs> that you can they laugh. Should. You can you can make light of your of your bowel <laughs> problems and it's okay. Yes. Yeah. That's my I mean, I don't have any goals, but if I did have a goal, one of them would be to just have people talking about their poop all the time in regular conversation. We're going to get there. Maybe not in my lifetime, but society is going to evolve to that point. I you know, hope. the great thing is nobody else is really fighting for that. So you can <laughs> easily get your own platform and make a dent on, on it. You know, have a real be, impact. I can be a pioneer. Thank you. Can. You can, yes. Yeah. You can have A hundred years from now, they're going to be like, you know, we never talked about the consistency of our stools at parties. Yes. Until Samantha Irby forced us to. Yes, let's reduce the, the poop <laughs> stigma. Thank you. You know, forget about mental illness and all these other things. Let's just, you know, clear this one up and we can <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. Um, well, I just wanted to read a couple of passages that like particularly oh made me laugh, okay. um, which it seems awkward to read back to you. That no, I love it so much. You're like in the shower, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, in the shower, I use a big block of Irish spring. And because I am black, I was raised to always use a washcloth no matter what. So I do. I also scrub my scalp vigorously with anti-dandruff shampoo, which is a thing beautiful people never have to use. Just once, I want to read one of these profiles where a slender, shiny tooth model is like, hey, bitch, I have psoriasis, while aggressively slathering tea gel under her roots. <laughs> oh my gosh, that just totally made me laugh. And then this other one about peeing. Um, you said... <laughs> Well, this whole paragraph is funny, and then I'll stop reading. We live up the street from a middle school, and children are already on their way home for fuck's sake, so I don't feel bad having six Diet Cokes in a row. This is when you wake up. I'll finish my water, but, like, I don't ever want to be too hydrated. All these magazines tell you how you should really be drinking your weight in water every day, and all these movie stars would have you believe their skin glows because of that water bottle they're carrying around, and I believe them. But also, why doesn't anyone ever talk about how much peeing you will have to do? I no longer have a pelvic floor, Jennifer Aniston. I cannot just be gulping down smart water with red was abandoned. <laughs> oh my god, you're so funny. Thank um, you. I know, I also, know. that is true. Every like health thing you're supposed to do, like everyone like talks about the benefits or whatever, but like no one ever addresses <laughs> the downside. You like, do you know what my day would be like if I just ate like raw kale and beans? <laughs> all day while like pouring gallons of water down my throat I would have to move into the bathroom I just I just want I will buy the lie because like I need to buy the lie we all do right like we want to believe that there's a better way but I just want to hear the side effects too I just want to know that like drinking this tea will make me beautiful but also is a diuretic. Like, just tell me that part, too. Especially because <laughs> you cannot use any bathrooms outside of your house anymore. Yeah. Like, where yeah. I am, like, you know, that's it. Like, you can't, no stores will let you in, no restaurants will let you in, the mm -hmm. public restrooms are closed. So, like, what are you supposed to do if you have to run a few errands a half an hour away and you've had, like, you know, a smoothie that's some... <laughs> <laughs> that's like made of you know dates and you know filtered water and whatever coconut I don't even know like what am I supposed to do not have the smoothie or whatever I stay home no more smoothies no that's true and smoothies are a big one too because like they you know you they love to tell you how many nutrients you're getting and how you can get like all your servings of vegetables for the day in this like beautiful green smoothie that's like in an overexposed picture on a marble countertop but then no one says the extra bit about uh you know what all this raw spinach is gonna do to you right they just don't tell you and now like you truly can't go anywhere to use the bathroom I don't know if people are wearing diapers or 
Yeah. How's <laughs> everyone else doing? I literally thought about like, sh- I shouldn't even say this out loud. I was literally like, I had, to go, I had to go like pretty far away. And I was like, should I stock my car with some baggies? Like, how am I going to go? How am I going to pick up my daughter, drive her to this other thing she has to do so far away? Like, what can I put in the car? Like, do I need a portable something? Like, what should I, you know, the, the smoothie bottle's not going to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly don't know what people are doing. That's another thing people should be talking about. Like, you drove out to the coast or whatever. Cool. I'd love to see your pictures of the sand and the water. But I also want to know, where did you pee during the drive? Yeah. What did, what did you do? Yeah. It's like a complete mystery. <laughs> Un- unspoken problems of the pandemic, you know? Every time, okay, from now on, and I'll report back, every time I see someone post, like, a we did a road trip picture, I'm going to comment, tell me how you went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> every time I see someone who's not in their backyard, I'm going to be like, this is beautiful. Where did you pee? Perfect. And then I'm going to collect the evidence and bring it to you. And P.S. Everybody on Instagram is suddenly like on vacation. Everybody, I like miss the memo that this is the week we're all supposed to like find the nearest lake and, you know, find, grab a canoe and, and row our hearts out. I mean, I don't know. Everybody's somewhere right now. I know. I have seen so much of it. And I, I try not to be judgmental. I mean, mostly because I don't care what anyone does as long as they don't bother me or talk to me. But there is that part of me that's like, you know, I've been in my, my dining room since March. Uh, what, where are you? And why do you feel safe there? And who are you breathing on? And we're going to be locked up forever because you couldn't just like be inside. <laughs> I know. I'm like, am I overreacting here? No. Do you know what I mean? Like I have been in my house here, which, you know, is I feel very fortunate. I'm very lucky. I love my mm-hmm. house. But Mm -hmm. I have slept here every night since March 12th, which is the longest I've basically been anywhere in a long time. Like since, I don't know, since my parents got divorced when I was 14, when I started like (laughs) moving houses, like I've never been so stationary ever. And I don't begrudge anybody, but I'm just like, everybody is in Montana and, um, you know, I don't know, but okay. okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't feel safe moving anywhere, but I'm probably just. If I had to get on a plane. I don't know. I would have like an emotional breakdown if someone was like, there's, I just wouldn't do the thing. I, there just is no, what am I going to wear a gas mask and a hazmat suit? Like I, I know I would catch it. Like I don't have good luck. Right. So I'm like, I know I'm going to catch it. And then all you hear on the news is how like black people get it and die immediately. So I'm like, (laughs) I'm going to get it. And then I'm immediately going to die. And I haven't like, cussed out all the people who need cussing out yet and it's like I can't there's no circumstance under which I would like fly right now I just I don't know but like again I love that other people feel confident I don't know where this confidence comes from (laughs) and I hope they remain lucky but yeah my feed is all like look at us in a meadow and I'm like a meadow you live on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> where <are you? laughs> oh, bitch, where did you go? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, crazy times. It's uh, it's insane. Um, you also wrote so in such a funny way about writing. I love like self-referential sort of meta-ness in, in different books. But you said um, about your writing, you said, and I'm sorry to only quote from the beginning. I have things all throughout, not to make you think I only read oh. like a chapter. But anyway, please, um, please. not that you were thinking that. But anyway, I'll just put all, everything in my head out into this podcast. Um, you say, my work. I occasionally write jokes on the internet for free because I am the last person on earth who still has a blog. <laughs> Sometimes I have freelance projects, but there's nothing right now. No one is going to pay me to write another book about nothing for at least the next two years. Unfortunately, I don't have anything new or exciting to say online and absolutely zero paying scams. So my heart sinks as it dawns on me that I have gotten up and gotten dressed just to read what other people are saying on Twitter. This is the glamorous life of a writer. <laughs> I, I mean, clearly I read a lot of like profile. I love, I mean, I would spend, I mean, I read one about you. I love 
to see what people do and their schedule and their whole thing. I love that. I love like seeing productive people. Um, and I really love when writers are like, yes, I get up, I have a dedicated 40 minute reading time. And then I move to this other chair and I do two hours of writing. And I'm like, in, in what world? Like, I, like people are putting on like real clothes and shoes to like sit down and dedicate time to their writing. I truly stare at the wall for 10 hours a day. And then I'm like, oh, do I have a deadline? And then I cram everything in. And then I don't do anything for the next two weeks. <laughs> but, like, people all believe that like it's, and again, I'm very, I'm only critical because I'm extremely jealous People like believe that everyone has, I did this interview and the woman afterward asked me to send her a picture of my writing space. So then I just sent her a picture of my lap because that's where I put the computer. I was like, this is where the tumors are going to be from the laptop. <laughs> my legs Every day. And she was like disappointed that I didn't have like a beautiful space with flowers. And I was like, I don't know what right like I don't know like what writer told you like led you to believe this fantasy life but most of us are disgusting in our pajamas like writing on the couch and eating. No, that would have been a good time to bring in um, the the poop stigma issue as well. You could have shown the toilet in the writing <laughs> space. You know, you missed an opportunity there. I think next time, you know, things yes. to consider. Yes. You know, yeah. I'm them. like, you could just come to my house and basically any room with a chair in it has been a place where I have written something. I, and I have a desk, but it's like covered with nail polishes. Oh my God. And this thing I bought off Instagram, that's like a leg massager, but I didn't realize how, how big and clunky it was going to be. And then my wife was like, get that out of here. So now it's just on my desk. Oh my yeah. gosh. There's yeah. no glamour over here at all. And yet you're producing like best-selling books all the time. This is just your way. Yeah. Yes. I want people to believe because it's true that you can like be a garbage person who doesn't have a dedicated writing space and write a book that people will like. Yeah. So then what's, I, the, what's the secret? Just saying, what's the secret? Because you're really good. Well... I mean, you have to have deep, unrelenting anxiety and mental illness, a uh, tragic comic childhood, <laughs> and be willing just to say whatever to make people laugh. Um, and then you just have to have a comfortable chair to sit in and then like type it, type on your computer. That's it. That's Great. it. People with I'm, tragic comic childhoods are jumping up and down right now. They're ready to get started. It's true. I, you, I do like a lot of like, hey, drop in on my writing class kind of thing. And so many people are just like waiting for the perfect, you know, waiting to get the perfect typewriter, or the perfect like cute office space. And I'm like, it's never going to happen. Get that out of your mind. Just write wherever. If the toilet is where it has to be, then just write there. Yeah. I mean, I, I would like to uh, disabuse everyone of the notion that, like, you have to, you know, be good or smart or have all your shit together to write. <laughs> you are ridiculously smart and you are good. I don't know about having your shit together. That's for you. To it's decide. not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> that was two truths and a lie or two lies <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, tell me more about being a stepmom because you say, I jump away from children the way most people jump back from a hot stove, which is not usually the best way to go <laughs> into step parenthood, but that's okay. What has that been like for you, especially recently with all the stuff going on? Well, I would say, so about that, quote specifically I have I think like I joke that my childhood was bad but like it was really bad and so I think as an adult one of the resentments that I have the about my childhood is like 
you know, my mom was 40 when I was born. And it's like, girl, you could have helped me out, right? So like my biggest fear with being around a child is that something I would say or do to them would resonate for the rest of their lives. And like 30 years from now, they'll, they'll be like, you know what? Sam really messed me up and then like hate me and write about me in their books or whatever. So I always like kind of tread lightly around children because I'm like, oh, what horrible example am I setting? So step parenting, I have a very, um, uh, my approach is very, you have a mom and a dad they're going to like decide the vaccine schedule and like whether or not you eat gluten, like they're going to decide all those things and guide your education. I'll show you some cool stuff. Like if you want to watch a David Fincher movie or whatever, I'll sit and watch it with you and like, I'll buy you stuff, but please do not ask me for any life advice you can trace back to me in the future when you inevitably fail. I just don't want to be responsible for any of the mistakes. All right. So, my, so like, you know how, like, step parents will come in and, like, have to show their authority or, like, I don't do any of that. I mean, I, for a while, I don't even think the kids, like, knew what my last name was. <laughs> like so kind of like guarded with them I just I have no I don't think there's anything that I know that would like help guide these kids better than anything their parents are telling them so I'm just like the fun one like we do fun stuff we watch movies you know their mom isn't really into technology so I'm the one who's like here's an iPad for Christmas. Like I, I do, I want to guarantee that when I'm old, they'll like take care of me and think about all the stuff I did for them and not think about how like they hated all of my weird rules. <laughs> so it's just like a kind of bribery relationship at this point. Yes. Yes. Which is fine. And, yeah. I wouldn't do that if they, like if they were my own children, like if I had children, I mean, my dad was in the military. We we had rules like you can't whistle in the house, like all kinds of like nonsense. I am afraid I'd be that kind of parent where I'd be like, oh, you're awake and not scrubbing something? Not in my house. So it's good that I don't have my own kids, but with other people's kids, I'm like, oh, a pile of money? Sure, take, <laughs> take it. Will you love me if I give it to you? Great, here you go. Although I feel like sometimes people who have like really strict parents or people who have had childhoods where a lot of things have happened that they haven't been happy with end up being completely opposite types of parents from mm-hmm. the examples. It's just the ability to sort of say I'm like not to model, but to go the opposite direction. Yeah. 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 I think if you look back and you're like, oh man, I really hated my dad. I don't want to be like my dad. But I, you know, I never, I think... I never wanted my own children. I mean, one, because my body just like started falling apart early enough that I was like, uh, grow a child in here? Absolutely not. Like, can you imagine what kind of gremlin I would give birth to? Like all these diseases and problems. Like, no, I I wouldn't do that to to a kid. So I never like had that like that urge or desire like ever I never thought like I want to be someone's mom but I do enjoy like when my friends started having babies I do enjoy dipping in giving the kid the noisy toy that they love and oh Oh, no (laughs) now you have gone on like another list of people (laughs) in my mind I can't even with people who give noisy gifts no (laughs) I try to give, I try to give like the good gift. I, I always loved when my friends had parents because they, or friends had kids or became parents because then they like would get super responsible and you could go to their house and they'd always have like good food and stuff. Like I have benefited from other people being parents, but I never, 
I was like, this is, no, it's too much work and stress and responsibility. I know myself better than that. I can barely keep these cats alive. <laughs> Like, I can't, a human, the, um, when there was school, um, I, I would like sit at the table with them while they're doing their homework. And like, I was just like, am I illiterate? I don't understand anything you guys are talking about. How do you know how to do this? And they look at me like, hmm, good thing we have a mom. <laughs> Our neighbors are math professors. And I was like, you better go over there. I don't know how to do, I don't even know how to add anymore. I just am like fractions. No. So as a stepmom, you get to be like, I don't understand fractions and then just walk away, which is perfect for me. That's nice. Although I have to say it's not fair because they kind of changed the whole math system on us. Like, what's that about? New math? I don't know. I don't know what was wrong with the old math, but now I can't help my daughter. And my, you know, I, I'm like, whatever, you're on your own. And I'm like, well, yeah. let me just, I'll teach it to you my way. And this yeah. is how you'll understand it better. And she's like, no, like that's not the way they taught us. What are you doing? It's so confusing. And I'm like, I'm out. That's it. I can't. I, I did long division like by hand yep, yep. in some of these kids. And they looked at me like I was from, you know, the 16th century. They were just like, what, what is that? Yes. What are you doing? And I was like, dividing okay, they're like no they looked at me like oh you poor thing you think that's math and I'm like <laughs> get out of here I know what I'm doing <laughs> so funny oh my gosh so what new stuff can I look forward to getting from you what are you going to write what are you working on in your little deadline times what well, what's next you have another book coming so because of the nature of what I do, it's always like there could be another book because I just write about, you know, the dumb stuff I think about. Um, so my agent was on vacation and like last week and he, another person on vacation. Right, everybody. Vacation and I was like, uh, let's talk about another book. And so we're going to talk about it. But it'll, you know, it'll be more of more of the same kind of thing. Like, Good. you know being mentally ill and um overthinking everything you know the stuff i always do um i had two cool jobs that i don't know how things are going to pan out because of the pandemic i wrote on a couple of tv shows one is work in progress which is on showtime and then i was writing on tuca and birdie which will be on adult swim now so with tv production I don't know when those are going to get made, but eventually they'll, they'll be out in the future. And I don't think I've told anyone this, so you're getting the scoop. So a million years ago, wrote a pilot for my own show based on my first book, Meaty. And we were at FX, and then we ended up at Comedy Central, and then things were just taken forever. But we did get a pilot order, and so sometime when we're all vaccinated and can be in the open uh we're gonna shoot a pilot whether or not anyone will ever see it i don't know but we are gonna shoot a pilot and then hopefully they'll let me make the show and let me tell you it's just 25 straight minutes of like poop and vomit jokes so great or <laughs> into that so yeah I have a lot you know I always have like a few things happening that I never have any details on I'm like mm, I did this thing and eventually maybe you can see it so yeah I mean I I'll do another book in a couple years I can't wait maybe I'll write about how to do new math <laughs> perfect how to how to do a podcast interview <laughs> It's great. I, <laughs> your setup is very beautiful. Thank you. It, I mean, this was great. Thank you. Um, do you have any parting advice to aspiring authors? Last question. Oh, yes. This is one thing like I am good and certain about. One, write all the time. And like, I know it feels like passe or whatever, but like start a blog or a newsletter or something that just gets you writing all the time, but don't put any pressure on yourself. 
And my biggest piece of advice is to understand that your writing is not going to pay you right out the gate. Maybe you're brilliant. I mean, of course you are, but maybe you're brilliant enough to like get a million dollars on your first book that you ever write. I blogged on the internet for 10 years and no one gave me money for anything. And I had to like work at an animal hospital. It just doesn't happen really that way for anyone that you just like blow up right out of the gate. So I would say, don't be afraid to work in obscurity for a long time until you make it, but keep writing all the time. I love it. All right. Well, I'm going to take my little tote bag and I'm going to head in the other room <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to get all your belongings together and yes. go on with your day. And uh, I'll think of you as I shuffle back and forth. <laughs> Please do. Zibby, this was so great. Thank you for having me. This, you are a delight. You too. Oh, that makes Thank me you. sound a thousand years old. I want to be like, bitch, you're cool as hell, but I don't know if like that. That was much better. I will okay. That. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make, I might make that a, a, an Instagram post. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're cool as hell. Thank you. You're All welcome. Right. You too. <laughs> Have a good day. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.